going eight like Hugo. Move out the way, please don't be a hero. Bling, blow. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. It's Leia, and if you're new, I want you to stop what you're doing and hit that subscribe button down below. Go ahead, take a second, hit the button. It's free to do. So today I'm going to be sharing my unpopular natural hair opinions with you guys because there has been some foolishness happening within the natural hair community and I just need to rant, okay? I need to get some things off my chest and just share some of these opinions with you guys. And of course, you don't have to agree with this rant or these opinions. It is what it is and I said what I said, so let's hop into it. So first things first, the hair typing situation. I feel like there's so much controversy happening with the hair typing situation because with hair typing comes curl typing and i feel like hair typing is somewhat necessary but curl typing is completely unnecessary like that's what's causing the most controversy and for what knowing your curl type doesn't make a difference so let me break it down right quick there are four hair types one two three and four most naturals identify as having type three and four hair and then each hair type is broken down into three curl types a b and c basically a means the curl pattern is looser c means the curl pattern is tighter and then b is kind of like a combination of both so if you're someone who has type 3 hair then your curl pattern could be a 3a 3b 3c or a mixture of all of those combined i'm saying all of this to explain why i think that hair typing is important and i think that because it gives you a good place to start when you're going into your natural hair journey because each hair type has certain characteristics that you can compare your own hair to and once you identify the hair type that that fits your hair the most there's already a recommended list of products and techniques for you to use and try that may work well for that specific hair type because when you're first starting off your natural hair journey it can be very overwhelming there's a thousand and one products to try and there's a bunch of different natural hair turns being thrown around like shingling loc method lcl method co-washing pre-pooing like all of that can get real confusing real fast when you're first starting out and you don't know too much about your hair so with just having that little bit of information there's already like a little starter kit of products and techniques for you to try out and you can take a couple of those products take a couple of those techniques try it out and see what works and doesn't work and then build from there as you're learning more about your hair now let's talk about curl typing the thing that's attached to hair typing and i hope i don't confuse anybody when I speak about this because I feel like I'm going to be talking in circles a lot but curl typing is absolutely unnecessary because it doesn't give you any helpful information about your hair. All it's doing is telling you how your curls spiral up. Just because your curls spiral up the same as someone else's or because they have a similar look to someone else's does not mean your end result is going to be the same. That's why it makes no sense to me why people are getting so caught up in it and titling their videos a twist out on 3C hair or the perfect wash and go for 4C hair. Because now you have someone saying, oh, well, my hair is 4C and her hair is 4C. So if I do the same thing that she does, my hair is going to come out looking the same way that her hair does and that's completely false there's other factors that alter the way your curls turn out in the end like your hair porosity and density or if your hair has been damaged by chemicals or heat are you still walking around with those damaged pieces on your hair that weigh down your curls there's so many other factors that are far more important to your hair than knowing the freaking curl type yeah i hope that made sense and that somebody felt me on that one because we're gonna move on let's talk about the 4c girls some of y'all feel like the 4c community is not being represented and i say that if you stop curl typing take the c out of the equation and look at the type 4 hair community as a whole you guys are being heavily represented there are so many type 4 influencers on this platform that are out here killing it i'm sorry if i mispronounced their name but you have African Beauty, Only One Jess, Finally Amber, Mia Nicole, Blake JL, Nikki B Natural, Lavishly Brit, and that's just some of them. There are so many type 4 influencers and content creators. How are you not being represented? If you're looking at it from a 4C standpoint, then that's the reason why you don't see it. Stop typing your curls and look at the hair type as a whole. Even with brands, Myel Organics and The Main Choice have came out with lines 
catered to type 4 hair. There's probably other brands out there that I don't know of that have lines dedicated towards type 4 hair. And when you go on any of these brands pages, pictures, they're reposting tons of girls with type 4 hair. 4A, 4B, and 4C if you want to go take it that way. In a couple of comments, whoo, shaking the camera. This is shaking the table. Try it. Try it. Try it. F with me if you want to. It's not a good thing. Okay? Not this back to the is shaking the table. talking about brands when I posted the main choices proceed with caution line there were a couple of people in the comments saying that the main choice is coming out with too many lines and that natural hair brands in general are coming out with too many lines and I think that that is crazy y'all need to keep it cute and put it on you natural hair brands are not coming out with too many lines <laughs> dare I say that there aren't enough what I need you guys to understand is that everyone's hair is different and everyone has different hair needs so each of these lines that are being produced by these brands are catered to different hair needs because alexis hair is dry it feels like a dusty brillo pad and she's in need of moisture so she needs a line that's going to replenish that moisture back into her hair but bianca She's good on the moisture. Her hair is so moisturized that she's actually overdoing it. And she needs a little bit of protein so that she can reel it back in. So Alexis is going to reach for the Tropical Moringa line by the main choice so that she can get that moisture into her hair. And then Bianca is going to reach for the Proceed with Caution line by the main choice so she can get that protein back into her hair. Do you see how that works? And maybe it's not that there's too many lines being produced. Maybe it's that your pockets is hurting because every time they drop a line back to back to back, you feel like you got to go and buy it. And listen, you don't have to buy it. They're not forcing you to buy it. You just want to. If you need to wait till later to try a line, then just wait till later, okay? But don't say that they're coming out with too many lines because that is false. And the non-natural hair brands that have 50 million trillion lines like OGX, <laughs> how many colorful bottles do we need of that? Hmm? Hmm? You won't see them complaining. They eating it up. Let's talk about sulfates and silicones. This one is this one is great. This is this one, man. <laughs> sulfates and silicones are not the devil. I don't know why. People are still thinking that they are, but they are not. Maybe back then, like back in like 2008, 2009, when the natural hair community was first starting to Maybe that was a bad thing back then, but today in 2019, child. A lot of the fear behind sulfates and silicones is that they dry your hair out, and that's a big no-no for natural girls because we want our hair to be moisturized. So if you're using a sulfate shampoo, your hair is just going to be dry for all eternity. And if you use silicones in your hair, when you go to re-moisturize your hair, the moisture from those products are not going to penetrate because you have the silicones blocking the way. And I'm here to tell you that if you have a good set of moisturizing products and you're moisturizing properly with those products, then your hair won't be dry when you use sulfates and silicones. I love me a good sulfate shampoo and sometimes it does leave my hair feeling a little stripped and a little dry but I follow it up with a moisturizing deep conditioner to combat that dryness and put the moisture back into my hair and with silicones the way I seal them in it locks that moisture in so that I don't have to go back in a couple days later to moisturize my hair my hair just stays moisturized don't get me wrong it's all personal preference on what kind of ingredients you like to use in your hair what I'm saying is stop crucifying people who use sulfates and silicones in their hair and telling them lies that their hair is going to be dry, crusty, dusty, and looking like the Sahara Desert. Because back in the day, your mama was using spa professionals, shampoo and conditioner to do your hair, and your hair was flourishing probably better than what it is doing now, but that ain't my business. And that's all I had to say. If you guys enjoyed this video, as always, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Drop a comment down below letting me know some of your unpopular natural hair opinions if you didn't subscribe. I told you to subscribe at the beginning. Did you think I was playing? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Says. Bro, hit the subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, make sure you turn on the notification button so you'll never miss when I post another video. My camera is about to die. It is flashing red. It will stop at any moment. So I got to go. Peace. Yeah, going ain't like we go. Move out the way. Please don't be a hero. Bling, blow. She's on skateboard, please.